many young people are in awe of having Gal Gadot as their Wonder Woman. But those of us of an older generation believe there's another actress who's equally perfect as the DC comic book character, namely Linda Carter. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my podcast. Wonder Woman, where do you come from? I come from Paradise Island. Paradise Island? <laughs> and that is on the map? No. It's not on any map. What makes you so strong? On Paradise Island, there are only women. Because of this pure environment, we are able to develop our minds and our physical skills. Now, take that lasso off and bring the prisoner into the questioning chamber. Hello. I bid you a warm welcome to my podcast. They came from within. Cult movie reviews. Eighth Wonder. Wonder Woman, 1975 to 1979. Kathy Lee Crosby was the first actress to play Wonder Woman in a television movie simply called Wonder Woman, which was shown on the 12th of March, 1974. But the character bared little resemblance to the crime fighter we know and love. She was blonde and did not seem to have any superpowers. Also, she dressed in a manner unfamiliar to fans. Thankfully, the movie did well enough for the ABC TV network to have another stab at it a year later. And so, the TV movie, the new original Wonder Woman, was broadcast on the 7th of November 1975, introducing the heavenly Linda Carter as the titular character in a tale which starts out in the same manner as Petty Jenkins' acclaimed movie from 2017. Linda's pilot episode and the first series were set in the 1940s, with that series being called Wonder Woman. There were two more series which were broadcast by CBS, with the title changed to The New Adventures of Wonder Woman resulting in a total of 59 episodes. And with Lyle Wagner appearing alongside Linda Carter in all bar one of them, as the original Steve Trevor in the pilot and the first series, and as Steve Trevor Jr. for the next two series. Both of the Trevors being handsome intelligence operatives, whom Wonder Woman gets to work for in the guise of Diana Prince, whilst fighting off all kinds of enemies simultaneously. Linda Carter was down to her last $25 when she won the part as Wonder Woman, beating the beautiful Joanna Cassidy, who's best known for playing Zora in Blade Runner, to the coveted role. But when you consider that Linda was voted Miss World USA in 1972, and voted the most beautiful woman in the world by the International Academy of Beauty in 1978, she was always destined to become famous. Linda has, for some time, been free from the dark period in which she was an alcoholic, and she backs many worthy causes. Strangely enough, Linda has never ventured much into cinema. Bobby Joe and the Outlaw appears to be the only film she had a leading role in in the 1970s. But she did make significant appearances in other TV shows. Linda was memorable in the Starsky and Hutch two-parter, The Las Vegas Strangler, and she got to play a true screen icon in the 1983 TV movie Rita Hayworth, The Love Goddess. Linda also brought her considerable glamour to the feature-length Mike Hammer mystery, Murder Takes All, in 1989. Wonder Woman was created by the American psychologist William Moulton Marston. His wife Elizabeth and their partner, Olive Byrne, helped to create her distinctive image. And Wonder Woman first appeared in issue number eight of All-Star Comics, dated 
October 1941, and she was originally drawn by Harry George Peter. This story is expertly covered in the 2017 movie Professor Marston and the Wonder Women, which stars Luke Evans, Rebecca Hall, and Bella Heathcote. Okay, boys, the fun's over. No wonder woman, it's just begun. Dr. Redcliffe and I have an appointment. A number of top draw actors have appeared in Wonder Woman. The award-winning Cloris Leachman, best known for her work with Mel Brooks, played Diana's mother, Queen Hippolyta, in the pilot movie, and Carolyn Jones, best remembered for playing Morticia in The Addams Family, was Queen Hippolyta in the series, and a pre-famed Deborah Winger played Diana's sister, Drusilla, in three episodes. The sexy Stella Stevens brought a playful edge to the pilot movie as a Nazi double agent called Marcia. Jessica Walter, Bradford Dillman, John Saxon and Roddy McDowell were among the leading actors who also appeared throughout the show's run while Wagner first found fame on The Carol Burnett Show which ran from 1967 until 1974. Despite his good looks, he spent most of his career working in television, popping up in such series as Lost in Space, Happy Days, Charlie's Angels and Fantasy Island. And Lyle was in the running to play Batman before Adam West got the part. Lyle Wagner died from cancer at the age of 84 on the 17th of March 2020. He had performed the role of Steve Trevor with much grace and charm. The Divine Wonder Woman, an Amazonian princess from Paradise Island, equipped with great strength, a bracelet which can deflect bullets, and a golden lasso which compels anyone held captive by it to tell the truth. Funnily enough, William Moulton Marston invented the systolic blood pressure test which is used as part of a polygraph test and it's nice to know that it was Linda Carter herself who came up with the idea of Diana spinning around like a ballerina as she transforms into Wonder Woman and you've just got to love the show's cheesy but appealing theme tune which was sung by John Barla the song was written by Norman Gimbel and was composed by Charles Fox. And you just can't beat such lyrics as fighting for your rights in your satin tights. Wonder Woman's eye-catching outfit was designed by Don Feld, a.k.a. Donald Lee Feld, a costume designer who received four Oscar nominations, one being for The Sting. Originally, around 2,000 actresses had auditioned for the part of Wonder Woman. Linda Carter confirmed that Jacqueline Smith, Kate Jackson and Farrah Fawcett had been among them. What's ironic is that Linda, in turn, was considered for Charlie's Angels. 1978 was an interesting year for CBS. As far as superheroes were concerned, Apart from Wonder Woman, they also broadcast The Incredible Hulk and The Amazing Spider-Man. In the comic books, Wonder Woman often fought female foes with special powers. However, in the TV series, she only encountered one, former Cedar, who has the ability to control ants. The first series of Wonder Woman, being set in the 1940s, made it fairly expensive to make which is the main reason why its setting was updated from the second series on. Both Linda Carter and Lyle Wagner are on record as saying that the move away from the 1940s led to the decline in its viewing figures and 
its subsequent cancellation. The first episode, called Wonder Woman, meets Baroness von Gunther, was shown on the 21st of April, 1976. And the final episode, entitled Phantom of the Roller Coaster Part 2, was broadcast on the 11th of September, 1979. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you for listening to my podcast. They came from within cult movie reviews. I'm off to pay Paradise Island another visit. Take good care of yourself, and goodbye for now. I must admit, though, it's as much of a mystery to me as it was to my father years ago. She looks the same. Mm-hmm. I was standing as close to Wonder Woman as I am to you right now, and she looked as young and beautiful and fascinating. Your father was a major then, wasn't he? Seems like yesterday. Did you see this? Oh, yes, thank you, Dan. Steve Trevor's got her? Don't I wish.